welcome to CAFTA. This is our second to last meeting of 2020. It's been quite the year. This week's topic is um, by Sully from Mandelbrot, and it's Mandelbrot PBX FileMaker and the Twilio Programming Voice. I'm sorry, the Twilio Programmable Voice API. Sully, go ahead. It's all yours. All right. Thanks, Phil. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully that works. Um, want to say thanks to Phil especially. Um, I always forget uh, how much Phil does to kind of prepare topics and he's been kind of pulling double duty with the amount of these that we've done recently. So uh, I thought I'd help out and, and show you guys some, uh, some stuff about Twilio because I have a lot of background here. So uh, if you don't already have a Twilio account, they are free. Uh, there's a referral link that I just added to the chat so if you use that referral link to sign up for your account, then I get 10 bucks in my Twilio account. I think you get 15 or 20 in yours. So it's a good deal for everybody. So uh, if you want to ask a question, please just have Phil ask. Uh, or if you want to ask something after the presentation's over, you want to call me. My number's on pretty much every slide here. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, the first thing, uh, about Twilio uh, really is just about Claris Partners in general. It's who's doing your phones. So um, a couple of months ago in December of last year, I was looking at all of the phone numbers that were listed on the Claris Partner website, and I ran them through a, uh, through a Twilio API that shows what type of phones attached on the other end. And I found that about two thirds of them are still connected to landlines or mobile phones. They're not connected to a VoIP phone that you would typically see in an office. And it's not much of a leap to kind of put together in your head that uh, the gap between phones and applications and FileMaker is a little bit wider than you would expect. So I mean, if we're not even putting uh, VoIP phones in our offices, what does that mean for our customers, right? So it's a, a question that sticks out in my head. Right? Who's doing your customers' phones? Who's doing your office's phones? How could you better integrate the two of them together? Uh, and how much more efficient? And what would that mean for those businesses and organizations? So uh, I guess the, the next part of this is just this communications as a plat or communications platform as a service. Right? What is a communications platform as a service? All it is is a ton of tiny little building blocks that you can put together to get granular control of telephony stuff like uh, making phone calls or receiving phone calls or sending text messages. And it's really everything that you can do with the phone added to your application one piece at a time. And it's about integration. So the key here is putting these pieces together for you so that you don't have to understand how the publicly switched telephone network actually operates. So instead of having to go out you know, to the street and start messing around with wires in some box somewhere, you can just pay one of these companies a little tiny sliver of, of a penny in order to give you a minute of phone time or send a text message. Uh, Twilio, by the way, is the best of these companies. There's a couple other ones, but if you look at the, uh, the way that Twilio has operated for years, the last three years, especially, their stock price, I think, three years ago was about 25 or 30 bucks. Um, last I checked, they were over 300. So to go from you know, a $30 stock to a $300 stock means there's a lot of interest in the company. So huge organizations like uh, Uber or DoorDash, like those, those folks that they don't necessarily want to share their phone numbers with everybody or they have to connect somebody inside of an application to text messaging or phones. They're using Twilio uh, to get that information back and forth between people without having to share their phone numbers. So uh, this is kind of the direction that things are going. And uh, I think their market cap's about $50 billion now. So I'd expect if they have another three years like they had the last three years, that it'll be, you know, it'll be one of the largest companies in the world. So um, anyhow, there's a ton of different things you can do with Twilio. Anything you can do with a phone, you can add to your application with this service. So uh, there are a couple of drawbacks though for FileMaker developers. 
The first one is that Twilio doesn't really know anything about FileMaker. So their pro code, uh, you know, pro code ecosystem. So I think there might be one guy, uh, if you know Mick Kleinick that used to work at, uh, at FileMaker International, he works in the Twilio Chicago office. If you ever run into him, ask him about the squirt gun that I, uh, I gave him at the DevCon uh, 2018 and the mayonnaise that they, uh, they put in. It's a weird story. You'll love it. So uh, anyway, though, uh, but Twilio, the, those guys have no idea uh, kind of who FileMaker is. It's too small of a boat for them. So uh, all their stuff is written in pro code. The documentation sometimes is kind of confusing. And the developer support, uh, when they were a little bit less busy before the pandemic, you could get an email back within about 24 hours. Uh, so you'd still be thinking about whatever problem you had that you asked about. Now, after the pandemic, everybody in the world is trying to work from home at the same time. And there are also all these applications that they didn't have to work for home before. And everybody's trying to go this direction at the same time. So you might wait three or four days now if you're on a free support plan to, uh, to get an email response. You kind of get what you pay for. So uh, you can also pay for technical support plans that are a little bit more expensive. Uh, if you need an email back within three days or well, within three hours during the week, you can get one for 250 bucks a month or 4% of your spend, whichever one's higher. Or if you'd like, uh, you know, 24 seven uh, voice support, you can spend $1,500 a month. If you want your very own Twilio person, so it costs $60,000 a year to you know, spend $5,000 a month. But for that, you're basically buying uh, a Twilio employee to follow your account. So depending on how big your application is, there are support plans that are out there. But again, you're not, you're not going to be able to do uh, direct support with FileMaker. It's going to be through some, uh, some pro code uh, that they've done. So uh, Bill, do we have any questions so far? Is Bill there? Anybody? Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, there are no questions so far. Okay, good. On we go. So let's look at a couple of things you can do without having to learn any JavaScript uh, in Twilio. So uh, the first thing that you're going to start with is phone numbers. So Twilio has a bunch of local and uh, toll-free US numbers as well as in a bunch of other different countries. So here's my Twilio dashboard, right? If I'm looking to buy a new phone number, I have phone numbers docked over here. If you ever can't find something that you see in a video like this, just click down here, right? And phone numbers is there. I've pinned it to my dock so it's a little easier to find. So here we have phone numbers. Oh good, the demo gods are with me. Earlier this morning, this wasn't, wasn't working. Their dashboard wasn't working. But here's all of my phone numbers, right? They're all listed, right? Each phone number has the number itself, the locality of the phone number, then the friendly name, its different capabilities. You can see that this toll-free number, it can't do MMS, which is picture messaging, right? So it can only do text. I think this, this my Chicago main number doesn't have fax capability, right? So if you're looking to buy a new number, you click up here and you can choose, well, I really need this number to be able to do fax machines. Like, okay. And then you pick a locality, All right? Let's do Pittsburgh, right? I hope I spelled Pittsburgh correctly. I don't know. Okay, so it pulls up a list. I think it does 10 per page. And you can refresh and get different phone numbers. So, and this is really great if you have customers in a specific place, or if you're, you know, you're trying to land some big account, you can put together a local phone number uh, and use that kind of as your caller ID. Uh, or if you have like a bunch of different web pages and you want to advertise in specific places. Uh, so, I'm gonna actually, why don't we just buy one of these? I think 318871, anything that's got three eights in a row, right? So if I buy one of these, I'll get charged a dollar immediately and then I'll get charged a dollar a month after that. 
click buy. And now I own this phone number. So it's mine until I run out of money in my account or I release it. So I can change the friendly name. So I'm going to change that to Pittsburgh. Right? You can also adjust the way that it, it reacts when you call it. So, uh, so right now it's set for voice calls. I can set it to receive faxes as well. And I can configure it with a bunch of different things like webhooks or twimmel bins, functions or studio flows. So that might sound a little bit uh, like a, a lot of different stuff that I'm throwing at you at once, but it's really not, not that complicated. Uh, anytime you get an inbound call, it's going to use whatever information you put in here to decide how it's going to route that call. So, uh, and we'll go through a couple of these individually over the, the next couple minutes here. Uh, with messaging, this is for text messages. So it's not what we're talking about today, but you can do the same thing with text messaging. Uh, you also can set up a webhook for call status changes. So whether a call has been answered or whether a call has, uh, you know, whether a call is uh, hung up or has been bridged or transferred or whatever, uh, you can set up a webhook that will actually take that information and send it to elsewhere, like send it into your application if you want to track your calls that way. Uh, now, all this stuff is connected to a phone number SID, right? Twilio, their version of a UUID is a SID. So every piece of information that they have is connected to one of these SIDs. Uh, 34 characters, the first two characters for phone number SIDs are PN, for calls are CA, for studio flows are F something. Um, text messages have a different two letter designation at the beginning, but you'll notice that the rest of these numbers, these are all hexadecimal, right? So uh, long, long string like this is unique to this particular phone number. So this is how it tracks with this. I'm gonna hit save real quick, just so that it saves Pittsburgh, right? Um, now, one other thing to, to know about this, if I copy that, and then I go over to this thing called the API Explorer, all of Twilio's APIs can be, can be uh, individually looked at this way through their API Explorer. So say I want to view this phone number, view an incoming phone number. Right? If I want to be able, I can do JSON or XML as the output, but I can throw this phone number in here and like click make request. It'll actually do this curl request live for me, right? So, and then I get this, this is the same information as JSON, right? So this makes it really easier uh, easy for developers to control their Twilio accounts and all the different things they can do with those accounts via their applications. Right? So that's all the same information that's right here. So all this web page is, is that when you hit save, it just sends a message to the API, just like you would be doing through FileMaker or through another application. So it's kind of, I think that's pretty cool um, that they use their own stuff that way. So let's jump back to to here real quick. So next slide. So the next piece of this is that they use Twimmel. So Twilio markup language. They have their own XML based coding language. Uh, it basically is HTML tags that have their own custom stuff in there. That's XML. Uh, you can do things like dial phone calls, dial numbers, uh, hang up calls, play recordings, play uh, sound files, uh, you know, basically everything that they do has got one of these tags attached to it. So the way that you control calls and you control phone numbers uh, is through this, these Twimmel instructions, right? So one of the, the fastest ways to kind of get used to these things is by using Twimmel bins. So uh, let's take a look at some of those bins. So Again, this is docked over here for me. If you need to find it, it's down here, right? You can pin that. So I have all these different bins that are set up, right? So inside of this bin, there's instructions, 
right? So all of them start off with this is XML and then response. And then what this one does is it dials a number, right? So you'll notice this destination is in inside of these uh, curly braces. So if I wanted to, I could just put a phone number in here or a list of phone numbers and it would dial those phone numbers. So uh, I have this set up as a variable. That's, this is how they do variables inside of uh, these twimmel bins. But just to back up a step, if you're looking at a phone number like this and I choose twimmel bin demo bin and then I hit save, anytime I get a phone call here, it's going to do the code that's here right so these bins can get kind of complicated uh, they can get fairly complex but they do have some limitations so they're really meant for testing uh, and prototyping rather than for production but if you're getting started with Twilio this is probably the first place that you're gonna look to you know get uh, get a handle on how to build Twimmel instructions for your phone numbers uh, now these curly braces also, these mustache variables, right? they also have a couple of drawbacks. One of them is that you can't put them inside. You can't, I can't put something inside here. It just, they don't work right. So it's really not meant for production again, but it is there if you wanna you know, start, start uh, a new project. Uh, so, uh, this is just about how to do custom parameters. This was one of the pieces that I, I was missing. I don't really know a ton about how to do queries like this, but you can do uh, custom parameters by adding a question mark, the parameter, right, for that last one would have been the word destination, and then the value uh, to, the, to the URL that you're, you're hitting. So, um, okay. Now, if we were all in the same place and I was doing a class about this stuff, we would all spend you know, 20 minutes doing a tutorial where you build the Twimmel bins. Uh, I don't think we really have time for that today, but if you'd like some help with that, just give me a call or send me a text and, uh, and we can work through some of these. So there's also limitations for these bins. Uh, the, uh, the bins have no looping, they have no if then, they have no logic whatsoever. So uh, they also require laser precise syntax. If you put a comma in the wrong place, the whole thing doesn't work. You can't blend voice and messaging Twimmel together. Uh, the code is really not very easy to copy and paste between accounts either. So if you're doing one app for one customer and that's the only time you'll ever use Twilio, then it might, you know, might make sense. But if you're planning on copying and pasting some of the code between accounts, it's not very uh, conducive to that, to finding them. Uh, probably the most important thing though is you can't, uh, you can't access your FileMaker data from these. It's also not really a front end. So if you have to go and, and work with you know, ones and zeros every time somebody wants to change a phone number, it can get really, really tedious. So on to the next method. We have Twilio Studio. Now, Twilio Studio is a much more graphical way of building stuff. And you can see in the animation here, this is somebody building a press one for, uh, you know, press one for service, press two for sales type of thing. So there they're putting in, if you press one, you call that phone number, press two, you call this other phone number. So you can build stuff that has a little bit of logic in there uh, and pass variables between these items. And it's actually a pretty nice interface too. So it's, uh, this is the studio logo, right? So a bunch of studio flows that hopefully will pop up. Okay, so um, let's just do, this is the one I use for my main phone number. So what does this do? When it receives an incoming call, it posts to this, it does an HTTP uh, post, right? And that is, all that does is it sends the phone number uh, to an, a separate app that I use. And then it, it's gonna gather input, right? So it's going to play this recording file and wait for the user to press a key. It'll loop 10 times, 
and it'll stop gathering after one digit, right? If nobody presses anything, it says disconnecting and that's it. So why would I do that? Well, robots don't usually listen, they just talk. So the nice thing about this is when you don't press one or two or five or whatever, then it disconnects you. So I don't get any robocalls on my business line, right? It's just an easy way to eliminate that. Uh, if you press a key, as long as the value is less than 10, it plays a file, tries to connect to my, my desk phone. And then if it can't connect, right? So this is, see how there's the mustache variables again there, right? If the dial call status equals no answer or busy, then it says something else and tries to connect to my cell phone. Right, so I'm gonna turn on my video here for a second. Uh, hi there. So let's see what happens. Let me turn this up. Right. So see how this flow works in real time. Press any number to continue. Mandelbrot LLC. Right, so we're press any number to continue. Right here. Mandelbrot LLC. Press any press five. Forwarding this call to a SIP phone. Mandelbrot LLC. Should forward to this phone up here. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. I'll hang that up. All right. So. Uh, a little live demo action. Hopefully the demo gods are with me today. So here we go. On to the next thing. So a tutorial of this, we do a couple of things like gathering speech or digits, um, eliminating robocallers, distinguishing between business calls by using a single caller ID. It's one of the nice things about this is you can change the caller ID of the inbound calls and reroute them to your cell phone then you save the number of the inbound calls on your cell phone and you have it text the number uh, that's calling at the same time. So I don't know about you guys, but I just don't answer calls that I don't recognize the number anymore. So if I'm routing my business calls, if all I have is my cell phone for my business, then it can, it can get really annoying, right? Especially because my phone number is out there on the internet where anybody in the world can scrape it up and start robocalling it. So <laughs> you can avoid that by putting together studio flow that'll send you a text message ahead of the calls. It'll give you the caller ID information for your business calls. And then it'll pass the call to your cell phone with a static caller ID that's saved on your phone as a contact. So you'll always know, okay, this is a business call, not a, you know, not a robocall or a, or or something like that. So uh, now there are, of course, limitations to studio as well. It's still not front end. So you also have issues with uh, the number of widgets. There's only a certain number of things that it can do. There's, uh, you know, they're adding things to it every once in a while, but it's meant for simple things. Anything that's real complicated or much more complicated than what I've just showed you is going to be a separate application you're gonna have to write it with pro code. So uh, there's no simple connection to Claris Connect either. So there's uh, probably something in the works, hopefully in, in Claris for that, but uh, there's no simple way to, to trigger it that way. There's no instructions out there as far as I know. Uh, and of course, it's, it's still not uh, at all connected to your FileMaker database. So, um, Oh, sorry, I'm up all night watching election results. A little bit, uh, a little bit groggy. So here we go. Click to call scripts. Right here's another freebie for you. This is something that you don't really need a whole lot of help to do. So there's this. I'm going to copy this to the uh, the chat. So there you go. So this is. A webhook, uh, well, you don't need to be able to write a webhook in order to make a call, right? If you just want to put a button on somewhere on a page in a layout that you click it and it makes a phone call out, then 
this is the code to do it. So uh, you copy this into a Twimmel bin. You put the address of that Twimmel bin here in your script. Then you set the from, the to, and the caller ID. So, and again, the caller ID has to be a Twilio phone number, or it can be your cell phone number if you verify it with Twilio, you can verify the, the numbers. Then that's it. This is the whole thing. So uh, hopefully worth the price of admission, right? Cool. So I'm pause for questions here again. Uh, Phil, is anybody out there? Uh, um, no, not really questions. Brian thought your demonstration was very nice. Oh, cool. Thanks, Brian. Um, Beverly asked, though, if, uh, you know, Claris Connect has Twilio connectors. Yes. yes. But um, so can you just briefly say, like, what other things you're bringing to the table besides what you get with Claris right. Connect? Right. Claris Connect, as far as I know, can uh, respond to incoming text messages and incoming phone calls. It can also place outbound phone calls and outbound text messages. Uh, beyond that, there's not a, a lot more that it does. So uh, there's many, many more options, uh, you know, that you can, you can use when you go to the pro code level. So uh, it's not to say that Claris Connect is a, a bad product. It's just they were trying to manage, uh, I don't know if it's a hundred different uh, different products under that one umbrella. Uh, so it's never going to quite catch up to what the most current stuff is. And a lot of these, uh, these APIs, not just Twilio, are written in pro code. So it's, it's not easy to maintain all of those different connectors in the first place. So uh, that's why they have, you know, folks like me who just go nuts over one particular API and try to learn everything they can about it. So I'll show you a couple of different things that, that I can do that Claris Connect can't do here in the next few minutes here. So Twilio has these ProCode SDKs, software development kits that allow you to write much more complex applications. Uh, they're available in uh, you know, six to eight different programming languages. If you're into FileMaker, then this is probably the one that you would use, right? JavaScript, Node.js, or if you're a little bit more old school, PHP. Right, but you can do Python or Ruby or Java or C. Uh, that allows you to do a lot more with your solution. Uh, to send information to Twilio, uh, they have a lot of REST APIs. And to make a REST API call, you use insert from URL. So the insert from URLs, they're actually fairly easy to construct when you use the API Explorer. Let's see if I can remember where I was, let's just, here. that's what the API Explorer's icon looks like. I don't think that's one, I think you have to dock that one too. You have to hit this and then scroll down over here somewhere to API, yeah, that one you have to pin. So, so here's our API Explorer. Now if you wanna write an API call, like for example, I wanna view the details of a call, then it's actually pretty easy to do this. So from insert from URL, remember you have basically three different things that you set. You set the URL that you're inserting from. You set the curl options, which is the data you're sending to that URL. And then you set a destination for the response, right? So this, that's the URL, right? It's right there for you. Then you have behind that, there's your curl, right? And this curl, this is just an authentication. This is your account SID, right? Everything in Twilio has an, a SID, which is basically a UUID, your account it starts with AC. So that's your username. And then your password is your auth token. So uh, that information is available on your homepage. Right? So I'm gonna jump up to the console dashboard, right? So that's up here, your account SID's there, your auth token, you can copy out there as well. So uh, when you make this request, it'll give you a sample of the, the response that you'll get, right? If you want to, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I've always wondered 
do XML. Here it is in XML, right? But I can switch between calls. It's like I want to look up the information for one call. There it is. Or if I want to view a list of calls, right? It has all of the information here for you. Let's just do calls to my phone number, right, to my cell phone. Uh, make that request. So it'll give you a list, right? Here's all, this is just a JSON array of all the calls. And each call, of course, has its own SID, right? It's just a JSON object. It has all this information to, from, duration, all that stuff. So the information is fairly easy to get out of there. Uh, it isn't by any means a front end, but there it is, right? It allows you to, to write these, uh, write these API calls pretty quickly. In order to get information back from Twilio, it's a little bit more tricky. So if you are familiar with, uh, with JavaScript or with another pro code language, uh, and also with building web applications, it, it gets a little easier. Building web hooks, it's easier. But if you're still kind of getting used to those things, the best place to start is with Twilio functions. So it's got a pretty simple three page interface. It's, uh, it costs nothing for the first 10,000 executions per month. Uh, it's serverless, so you don't have to understand how to you know, run a Apache server or uh, know any Unix or command line stuff. Uh, you don't have to worry about security or hosting or anything. It's already built into everything that they have. It runs on AWS, but you don't have to know anything about AWS to use it. Uh, and the interface is, is not bad. Uh, see if you can take a quick peek at that. So this is Twilio functions, right? So the, just hit the classic view on this. And here's a blank form, right? So you remember how we were looking at at that phone number. Where did I put the phone number? Nope, nope, nope. Here's one, right? So if I change this to a function, right? I can select a function and then select the, the actual, right? I can select the one that I want. And then whenever that phone gets called, where did I go? Ah, oh, here we are. Whenever that phone gets called, it's going to execute whatever code you put in here. Now, their functions are all written in JavaScript. So it's almost like they knew we were coming, right? Especially with all the new JavaScript things that you can do in FileMaker 19. So you can write your JavaScript in here. And then there's also this configuration that is shared across all of your different functions. So if you have environment variables, like for example, your FileMaker data API credentials, you can drop them in here. Um, if you have dependencies that you wanna use, like request or, or something like that in order to query the data API, you can put the dependencies in here. So uh, just far, far easier to write code this way if you've never, uh, never done that than it is to try to figure it out on AWS the first time. Um, I'm I'm AWS certified, so I uh, I learned the hard way. So I figured out how to how to do functions with AWS Lambda. You get a lot more executions in Lambda, and it's uh, it's a far richer uh, system, but it's also far more difficult to learn. So uh, okay. So quick intermission before you get into the stuff where I really start showing off. Mm. No, uh, no other questions than, uh, last time. Just completely floored everybody, right? <laughs> Taking it all in. Okay. So let's talk about a use case. So how did I get this far? Um, I used to work for a modeling company and in 2019 they started advertising differently. So they had been doing all outbound marketing and that means they had kids knocking on doors next to houses they had just remodeled. Uh, then they'd take the phone numbers from those people that they, they took from the canvassers and they would use outbound telemarketing. So 500,000 calls a year was about their average. And they would basically badger people on the phone until they would take an appointment. That's how they operated for about 25 years until last year they decided they wanted to do inbound marketing. So 
uh, they had some good results with it, but they had a lot of new challenges as well. Probably the, the, the first one is this guy, right? If you're a Mad Men fan like I am, it's Don Draper from Sterling Cooper. Uh, he's, every time they had a new inbound source, they would have to deal with somebody who was selling advertising space. Most of those guys didn't just want to sell ad space. They wanted to sell the design of the ads. They wanted to sell the recording application for the phones. They wanted to sell a CRM, a website, your own custom iPhone app, and a dozen other things that you might not really need. So some of the services might be useful, but most of the ad agency systems wouldn't help you differentiate between which ads were efficient and which ones weren't. Uh, it also meant that if you ever left their ecosystem, that you might lose more than just their advertising. You'd lose some other part of your business that you'd have to replace. So uh, also they weren't used to doing inbound marketing. So their business hours were 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 to 3 Friday and Saturday. Well, when they started putting their phone number up all over the place, they quickly realized that the phone would ring a lot more when they were closed when the, when uh, sorry when they were open right so they had uh, they had a dilemma they could put a cell phone number up on on all those places and kind of play hot potato with a cell phone but they realized that probably wouldn't work either so they were getting calls between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. seven days a week and they didn't know how to deal with it uh, now the other challenge was that they they were already making half million outbound calls through their phone system that they had. And all of that was integrated into FileMaker. So it wasn't the only thing that was integrated in a FileMaker though, their CRM, their payroll, all the ways that they were producing, uh, remodeling jobs, all their commission calculations, uh, managing hundreds of employees with reports and statistics and everything else. It's all in FileMaker. So adding an extra utility app just to do the inbound marketing didn't really make sense unless it was in FileMaker. So the solution for that was that uh, they would use a FileMaker application to kind of put all those things together. Uh, every ad would get its own unique phone number. So if you have like say uh, Clipper Magazine, right? if you live around Chicago, you've probably gotten a Clipper Magazine in your mailbox at some point. Uh, it's basically a, a book about 30 pages long that's full of pizza coupons and remodeling ads. If you get Clipper Magazine up on the North Shore, it's a different Clipper magazine than it is on the west side. It's a different Clipper magazine than it is in the loop, right? So every single one of those different localities has a different phone number in the ad. Every time they have a different marketing promotion, whether it's 90% or sorry, 90 days same as cash or 20% off, they all have different phone numbers on them. So every time the phone number is called, it's tracked differently but it's still all routed to the same few cell phones, right? So you could have a hundred different phone numbers that all route down to just two or three cell phones and they all call in through the same system phone number. So it, you don't have a hundred different numbers you have to save in your cell phone. So now if you, if you do that, you also have to worry about caller ID. So when the calls come in, it actually pulls a caller ID, ID information off of uh, White Pages Pro Caller ID database. I think it, they charge seven cents per, uh, per poll. Um, but that allows employees to see, okay, is this a real person or not? So after the call is completed, uh, a recording of the call is sent via email to the call center managers and uh, ownership also gets a copy of the recording. And they listen to those about once a week just to make sure that the you know, phone calls are being answered the right way. Uh, all the data uh, of, each, uh, you know, of each call and the recordings are then also pulled into their existing FileMaker solutions, which allows them to track costs, it allows them to track performance, uh, and it allows them to build reports that are based on the data that's there. So this was something that I built for them uh, at the beginning of the year. And uh, you know, it still didn't really have a front end to it. It's just a back end application that just routed the calls where it needed to go. And every time they needed, uh, you know, every time they needed a new phone number set up, I would just set it up and that was it. So at some point, somewhere around March or April, I realized why wouldn't I just do this for everybody? 
Like, I'm going to build a front end for this thing. It'll be great for people that have offices that are closed during the pandemic. And they'll be able to route their calls. You know, why is it an ad that has the phone number? Couldn't it be a department or a specific person, right? So that's, that's kind of where this came in, is Mandelbrot PBX. So uh, I just recently listed this on the marketplace, uh, on Claris Marketplace. So it's up there, it's on my website as well. Uh, it's the first time I've demoed this to, uh, to developers. So uh, you'll have to bear with me a little bit um, as I do this. So PBX really consists of two publicly hosted FMP12 files and a couple dozen AWS Lambda functions. And together it kind of makes it possible to get rid of old phone systems that either don't play well with FileMaker or can't handle routing calls outside of an office. Uh, the first FMP12 file is the admin console where you configure your phone numbers, set up your users, uh, and set up routes, like something like that. And the second file is a caller ID window where end users can place calls or see who's calling or listen to voicemails or recordings and communicate with each other. And that looks kind of like this. Uh, so this is meant for teams that work from home uh, or in the field or in the office or any combination thereof. It's also set up so you don't have to learn any new code, right? So you don't have to learn JavaScript. You don't have to learn Twibble. You don't have to figure out how to do Lambda uh, or any web application hosting. Uh, it also works with SIP phones. Uh, so if you have desk phones or you want to run an office network, it's, it can easily be done with this. So. Well, this starts off with oops, starts off with endpoints. So for me, an endpoint is just a phone number that you purchase through Twilio, and it allows outside callers to communicate with up to 10 users, uh, or it allows the users to call back out the other direction. So each endpoint has a bunch of options. We'll get into those a little later, but there's also the users themselves. Users have options. Right, so probably the most important set of options. Let me just bring this back up here. Oh, no, nope, that's the wrong one. That's my dummy CRM. Uh, user profiles, right? So users have names. They have a, a FileMaker account name as well. And so I can link this with other applications. I can put in a cell phone number or a landline or something else. I can switch between my desk phone and my cell phone for where I am. Uh, I also can, I can set myself as a way, right, so I won't get any phone calls. I can change my caller ID. Right, so if I want to call from my Boston phone number, I can switch it here. If I want to call from my Houston number, right? And everybody has an avatar, right? So avatars are important. They help users figure out what's connected to what. It just, it's a visual cue that makes things a lot easier on people. So you know, aside from that, you have routing, like what goes in between your users and your, uh, your endpoints is routing. So one of the difficult parts of, of this whole phone thing is being able to efficiently route people. So you can adjust your routes easily this way. Denver, I'm gonna knock this down to just, actually let's leave her on there. And turn my camera on real quick so you can see how this works. So there we go. So if I dial this number, let's see. 5752666. It should just call the Denver phone. Come on, demo gods. Oh. It would probably help Press if I actually any number to continue. Probably help if I actually committed the the change, right? Let's redial that. Right. So there we go. Right. Okay. If I want to change that to route to more than just that phone. Let's route that to a bunch of people. Go ahead and redial. And it's going to route a call to my cell phone at the same time. Right? Okay, that's crazy. 
Stop. Stop. Too much. So I also have this set up to do caller ID. And so you remember, you can actually, it's hard for me to figure out. There's the caller ID text message that was sent along. So I currently have it set up to run in, uh, in white pages. So the white pages pro caller ID looks up uh, the age, uh, gender, the name, uh, a couple of addresses, and anybody else who's associated uh, kind of with that account, which is you know, kind of intrusive if you think about it. Uh, but uh, it's publicly available information. I mean, you can also see the, the phone carrier that they're using, like are they on T-Mobile or AT&T? Uh, and you can do the type of phone. So it's not the only lookup service that's out there. Uh, and the one that people like the best is actually FileMaker records, right? So what's the way that people answer their phones in every FileMaker office ever? It's you see the phone number on the caller ID, and then you have to go into FileMaker. Hopefully it's already open on your desk, and you open a new window, you hit find, and you type the phone number in. And if you're really fast, you can do it before the, the uh, person's phone call drops out. But for the most part, you're going to be on the phone with somebody saying, is this the phone number that we have on file with you? Right? The alternative to that is to use a, a caller ID window to help you screen calls. Uh, I can do this. Okay. I'm connected to that Denver number, right? So this is that last call, those last two calls. Here's one that was direct, right? So that only was going to one phone number. And then we have this one that's missed, right? This is the second time that I called there, right? Now, this allows me to screen things a lot more easily. If I call from another desk, like, I'll just start the video again. So this time, this guy, right? This guy's gonna call. Hopefully I remember to set his caller ID correctly. My phones are going to go berserk. Right. Okay. I'm going to turn that off before I go nuts. But you saw how this pops up, right? So it's before you answer the call. Uh, it allows you to hit go. You can jump to his file, right, his CRM record. Uh, you can also do a, a couple other things with this. Uh, we'll go through them a couple at a time here, but uh, this is also available on, on FileMaker Go, of course. Right? So with this battle pad, I can call out, I can adjust settings, I can say, hey, I'm at my SIP phone, right? I can look at the places that I'm receiving calls from. So this is really user interface stuff, right? This is an admin interface, this is just end user stuff. So. There's also, if you have voicemail, right here you can listen to your voicemails too. This is just a really nice interface. Uh, some of you are probably wondering why, what's with the smiley faces, right? And trying to make things fun. So the rest of your team can see this when you mark your calls this way. Anybody that's on that route or anybody that's set up to do, uh, what's it called? Anybody that's set up as a user that's going to be routed to that is going to be able to see that call in their caller ID window. So it just helps people that are working in the same office. Okay, this was a great call. This call was, you know, needs attention. Right, everybody else on the team will be able to see that note. It just helps you work together. So, um, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of wonderful UI elements on that. This is probably my favorite one, is if there's no voicemail, it's gray. If you've listened to the voicemail, it's green. If somebody else has listened to the voicemail, but not you, it's yellow. And if it's new, it's red. So again, if you have a voicemail box and it's six people that are trying to answer the same set of inbound calls, you want a way that all of them be able to hear the voicemails, right? 
the first system that I set up like this depended on a, a technology called Simul Ring. And if you called somebody, all the phones would ring at once and the call would just go to whoever got the, uh, whoever got the call or whoever's phone hung up, hung up, whoever's phone answered first. So the problem with that is if you get on an airplane, right, you go to Vegas with your friends for the weekend, skip ahead a little bit here, then it's, uh, it's not so good. By the time you land, you might have missed five or six calls. So, um, you know, dead batteries on cell phones basically bring down networks like that. So that's, that's just the way that these networks are set up in a lot of cases. Um, one of the, the ways that you can leverage Twilio to avoid that is with this, uh, this AMD AI. It's answering machine detection. So what you do with that is you get a call and it splits to all the different users. And then the AMD AI listens the first few seconds of the calls as they, as they come through. If it hears something that sounds like a voicemail, then it's going to assume that it's a machine and it's going to hang up the call. But if it hears something that sounds like a human, then it's going to send the call through. Um, all the while, the person who's calling, all they hear is ringing. So they hear ringing or hold music. You can actually set that in here, right? If I adjust my endpoints. So I'm going to go over here. This is the Denver endpoint. Do not disturb. It's turned on. It's got this wait music set up, right? I also put my cell phone number in here for notifications. So if you're trying to manage a team of people and they're supposed to answer their phones and they're not answering their phones. It's just going straight to voicemail. I'm going to get a text message every time that happens. I'm not going to be able to do anything about it until they turn their phone back on, but at least I'll know that they're not answering their phone. So let me turn my video on here again for a second. Let's do, uh, let's do a little demo of this. This is going to be a little nuts with all the phones ringing at the same time. So first I'm gonna fake like I'm a voicemail. And, oh, I missed a digit. First I'll fake like I'm a voicemail, and then I'll act like a human. Okay. Dialing. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn some of these down. Please wait while we connect your call. Hello, stop me. Okay. Check this out. You've reached the cellular voicemail box of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Non human detected. Disconnecting call. Okay, so it disconnects that one. So I pick this one up. Say hello. Connecting to caller. Right, so it connects that call because a human answered. So and additionally, I get this message on my cell phone that says, Paulita Gianetti missed a call from Denver, right? So it makes it really easy to, to, to uh, work with teams that way and kind of keep track of everybody. Of course now, oh, and then there's my recording link. So everything is, uh, so I set that to record. Also have it set to email and SMS, or email and SMS the recording links. So I have a recording link on my phone. There's probably one in my email as well. If I hit the recording link. Connecting to caller. All right, so connect that now. I don't know if you guys can even hear that. So hopefully you can. Um, we can hear it. Okay, cool. Good. Um, cool. So you, uh, you also can set voicemail boxes for these things and voicemail notifications, right? Notify users via SMS, notify via email. You can set uh, the voicemail greeting for each box. You can set a number of times 
that it'll play the uh, the whole music before it goes to voicemail. If you set it at zero, it just kind of goes forever, which is a little bit, you know, but um, there's, uh, there's all these really cool little features. I'm still working on, uh, on transferring calls. And then there's the lookups, right? So being able to text out the file maker information, not just white pages information when you text caller ID data to users is pretty useful. Uh, um, if you look at logs and recordings, so this is this is one of the other pieces that people really have a hard time getting right. Um, so all of the JSON for the call, like this is all the Twilio JSON for the call. Like you don't need to to use uh, a webhook to do this. You don't need to figure out how to write the JavaScript for it. It's already there. So you can already link to this as an external FileMaker data source and get this information back out of here. So the most important stuff is already parsed out into fields, like the call SID, timestamps, the caller ID, uh, like the numbers that were used for the caller IDs, and the recordings, right? Even just getting this recording URL is a pain in the neck if you don't know how to write uh, you know, a, a really good insert from URL script step. Um, of course, you can hit play, Hello. and it just connecting to caller. Right. The feedback. Right. Um, and there's also this spot here, child calls. And so I have it set to record. And again, the way that that we uh, distribute calls is you have one call that comes in and the 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 person that's calling hears hold music they get put in a queue right they're they're basically waiting in line for somebody to answer the call and while that's happening the PBX software is calling all of the people that are lined up to answer the call so if you want to hear one of the recordings if you reach the cellular voicemail box of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Not human detected. Disconnecting <laughs> call. Right. So it makes it easier to kind of debug and adjust the settings for the the uh, AMD AI. So the DND bypass stuff has its own set of settings, like these timeouts and stuff. You can mess with this stuff if you have somebody that's got a really long greeting. Like if your greeting is just hello, then these settings will be fine. If your greeting is Mandelbrot LLC, where whatever does whatever, and here's a slogan, my name's Sully, how can I help you? You're probably gonna need to adjust these settings in order to get it right. So uh, anyhow, uh, back to, uh, okay, so record details. Now, all of the other, um, all of the other backend stuff is in here too, right? Like the conferences, all of the uh, all the JSON for the conferences, the call legs. If you need individual call leg data, right? It's all listed in here, right? So you really don't need to query, uh, you know, query their database or query Twilio's API very much. It's all set up for you. Uh, also, you'll notice that that call, the recording, is here, so your users aren't going to be looking in the, the admin section. They're just going to click here, and it's going to play the recording, Hello. right? So, uh, or they can share, right? Want to text somebody or email them or just copy the URL. It's all there. So, uh, now if I can find it. Okay, here we go. So, what did we skip? Oh, not much. Okay, so back to here. Let me get my notes. I don't forget what I'm doing. So, uh, SIP registration. So all of these phones are SIP phones. Uh, one, of the, one big advantage to the SIP phones is that the voice minutes on them cost about a third of what, um, what the, 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 just the normal PSTN minutes cost. Uh, and they're pretty inexpensive. Like they're, they're cheaper than ever now. Uh, especially since there's all these offices that have closed. So uh, I've set this up so that you can call with a three-digit extension, like, and it will actually call 
through that extension, either to the SIP phone that's got that extension or to the, the other phone number that's attached to that user. So you don't have to know if somebody's at their desk as long as they've marked where they are. It's kind of nice. Um, and of course, there's the, the outbound routing, right? There's a script that's included with this that uh, you set the, the to, the from, and the caller ID, and you can drop it into an, a FileMaker application as a button. So just makes it a lot easier to, to embed that calling in there. There's, of course, the dial pad as well. You can use that from FileMaker Go if you're not at the office and you want to be able to make a call on your business caller ID. But outbound routing is all about that caller ID. You want, uh, want whoever's getting your calls to be able to call you back at the right place. So um, one last piece of this uh, is conferencing and coaching. So uh, I've created a way to do uh, conference calling, to do outbound conference calling. Uh, so let's do, let's do this, right? So I'm going to do, we'll start this conference, right? Two, three phones. So, okay. So those three people are in a conference call. We go to the conference calls in progress. Right, so we have these three people. Let's mute them. Mute one, mute two, mute three. Do you guys ever see that show on ESPN, Pardon the Interruption? Right, where if you say the wrong thing too many times, they just mute you, right? I can also, uh, I can join the call. If I do this this way, where am I currently logged in? I can just to join. Yeah, it's gonna join from my cell phone makes that little beep sound, now everybody can, now hear, everybody me. can hear me, right? And hang up, it makes that beep. I can also join silently if I wanna be stealthy and just listen, right? So now nobody can hear me, hello? And my favorite one is this one. Uh, you can join as a coach, right? So if I join as a coach, right? This phone is the only one that can hear me. All the other phones can't hear me, right? So that allows me to coach live phone calls without having to worry about, oh, well, I can't really say that in front of all these people. I just needed to say it to the one guy that works with me, right? It's great if you have an office that's not all together, but if your office is distributed into several places. Of course, I can hang up the call just by clicking X there. So, okay. So how does this compare with everybody else, right? So the closest alternative to this is Ring Central with uh, RC2FM connector. Uh, Automation USA has a connector that makes it easier for you to, uh, to use Ring Central's API. Still not a front end. Um, and Ring Central also does include all their usage. Uh, so you don't have any usage charges. I think they have unlimited talk and text, plus uh, they have uh, video and uh, a couple other things, but it's still not really in FileMaker. So there's a couple other alternatives that are also not in FileMaker. Uh, but you know, I'd be silly if I didn't you know, at least tell you what I charge for this stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you to buy anything, but this is where I start pricing for this. If you already have a FileMaker license, you should get something for it, right? So uh, there's a, a couple of reasons why this is so much less than everybody else. One of them is because if it wasn't for the FileMaker community, I would probably still be miserable working at that remodeling company. So helping you guys all run your offices for a little bit less is an honor. Uh, second, if uh, I want PBX to be the gold standard for uh, for phones that are attached to FileMaker, uh, I'm gonna have to have your guys help to do that. And since I'm still a relatively new guy to the FileMaker scene, uh, people didn't even know I existed until 2018, uh, it's gonna be a lot harder to do that on my own rather than just to kind of uh, basically give this away to you guys. Uh, 
also, if your customers install this, it's you know a lot of after work reports and custom workflows and archiving audio files and new layouts. And it's just a ton more stuff for you to do. Plus, the longer people spend in front of your applications, the more they depend on them and the more value you have. So it's better to try to put everything that you can into the applications, including their phones if you can, just to keep them glued to your software. Uh, and third, the, the pricing is pretty low because of what it says down in the corner there. It doesn't include Twilio charges or hosting or customization or any of that stuff. Not everybody needs that stuff, right? Not everybody needs me to set up a, uh, set them up a FileMaker server that is publicly available. Uh, not everybody needs a FileMaker license. Not everybody's going to need SIP hardware or SIP configuration. Uh, and sometimes people are going to buy that as a, a, you know, a bundle from you or from me. Uh, but, you know, that's, that is what it is. Uh, I also don't really want to be the phone company. I'd rather, I'd, I'm just one guy. I don't have the capacity to run a phone company. I can write software all day long, but I just, I would rather not try to figure out how much to charge people for something like that. So uh, you, you set up PBX and then uh, you pay Twilio and I kind of get out of the way. So uh, if you're looking for this for your office, just you know, give me a shout. Uh, I also do uh, perpetual pricing if you don't want to have to pay every month. So that's it. So here's my contact info. If uh, you guys need to get at me or if you have any questions, let me kind of open it up at this point to, uh, to everybody just to see uh, what you guys thought and if there's any questions or we can talk about something totally different if you want. So is anybody there? <laughs> We're here. Yeah. Hey. Very cool. Thanks, Sully. Yeah, the demo is really product to life. Right. It's really hard to understand what it is with, if you don't have any examples, kind of what it is. So uh, I think that was part of, I, I did a, a presentation like this a couple of years ago for the, the CAFA group, and the demos weren't nearly as uh, as efficient as these. So, you know, you're, fade, you're fading away in your microphone. I'm getting slowly getting further away from the microphone. Or it's getting further from you. <laughs> yes. Right. Or both. Uh, no, I did a I did an, uh, a presentation like this a couple of years ago, and it was just here's all this code, and it's just way harder to follow something like that. Uh, I wanted to give people kind of an idea of the, the back end of it, but without a front end, the application side of it doesn't really help. You know. Um, Michael wants to call you. Can he call you? Can he call one of yeah, your numbers? Yeah. Of course. Throw your number in the chat. Yeah. Um, which number? Uh, which number do you want to call? Now let's start the video. Here. Doesn't matter to me. Whatever number you, you want me to call the one on the slideshow. Uh, no, that just goes to the. That's my main office number. Try doing this one. Uh, Seven two zero. Okay. So that's the the Denver number we've been playing with. So. That's going to light up like all the phones on my desk. <laughs> Hopefully I type that in there, right. Okay. Falling. Okay. <laughs> right. Hey, Scully, can we see that? Can you find it? Yeah, you want to see what it looks like in the, the logs and everything? Yeah. Oh, wait. No. no. Right. So you got this incoming call. Let me answer it. Hello? 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 There you go. Hello? Hello? So now that I've answered the call, you see how this changed to answered, right, rather than incoming. Yep. And if I hang up the call, it should turn completed, right? Okay. And there also should be a recording that pops up. Hopefully I left that, yep, and now it's got a recording. So I'm gonna mark that as a, as a laughing call. There we go, mark is red. Well, good to see they didn't give you a picture of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I was wondering if that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if it shouldn't pull data from the lookup. Isn't that what you were saying it would do, or does that oh, yeah. existing uh, customers? It pulled the, the it pulled lookup data. So I have Brentwood, New York, and uh, I wasn't sure if that white page service was going to provide a picture. This is this is the white page from it. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, AT and T phone. Um, what is that? says it didn't find your name or your age or your gender. So at least there's still a little bit of privacy left in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to give my information out. Right. So the phone number, though, is registered to AT&T. And yep. uh, it's in Brentwood, New York is where the, the address is. Um, or at least the phone numbers uh, was uh, purchased there. So um, yeah, if you were in this CRM, then it would text the, uh, you know, it has the ability to be set up to text the information from the, the CRM. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, it's one or two extra cycles of development to make that happen. So uh, you can look at the call record too. So here's the call record. There's the lookup information that I saw, right? Okay. Um, since I've marked this as red, if I unclick that, Hopefully it'll still work. Well, my internet's going to try to crap out on me here. Knock on wood. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. But yeah. So if I click this checkbox, right, it marks in the record whether or not I've read the call. So this is just kind of a I've read the call thing. There's all these settings in here. Right? These are all the individual settings that I use internally in order to uh, control the calls. Uh, there's the call case on and the recordings and all the child calls. There's a lot of information there. Really, really nasty stuff here. Really want to nerd out. Get some of this stuff out. Of <laughs> you got my dog's attention. Huh? That's my dog. So Thanks. the, the really, uh, oh, is this going to open or not? You can open, you can do it. I believe in you. Come on. No, it's not going to do it. Well, anyway, um, yeah, the really nasty stuff looks looks worse than this. Press that. Where's the queuing one? Right. So this is if you really want to want to write this stuff yourself, this is what you're doing, right? And I don't want to get really deep in how this operates because it'll you know it'll make your brain melt. But writing the code underneath can uh, really, or having somebody else write the code underneath can really be a nice shortcut. So you don't have to learn how to do all that stuff yourself. Cool. Other questions? I don't think anybody's still paying attention. We're all, we're here. Yeah. We're here. Oh yeah, they're there. I, I tried to take a nap, but then you just kept waking me up. <laughs> <laughs> right, all those ringing sounds. Okay. No, so Very it's good. More information of a phone, file maker. It's really. Yeah, right? uh, I mean, I wish there was more that I mean, that Connect did. Somebody <laughs> calls me, and I could text them something too while we're in a conversation with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I use a separate, separate database for that. Let me, uh, uh, yeah, this one. I'm gonna take a minute to open, but I have a separate MMS solution that I use for that. It's a different Mandelbrot product, and uh, I was actually kind of surprised, like how much, uh, how much this actually ended up working for people. Um, you know, this is one of the first applications that I ever put on the marketplace was 
actually the one before this was an SMS product where it was uh, FileMaker, you know, just basically FileMaker SMS. And I got a call one day that was somebody that wanted to do pictures with it too. And the use case for it was actually a methadone clinic uh, in Pennsylvania. So they were using the, the photos to, uh, to do telemedicine and try to figure out how many pills were left. So when they call somebody who's recovering and say, okay, dump all your pills out on the counter, take a picture of it and send it to us. And that way they could tell whether or not they should send them more pills or not. Right. So this is how I do all my text messaging though. Now, like all of the, this is actually the recording. Right. So uh, if you put this together with uh, the PBX thing and uh, a couple other things I'm working on before you know it, you'll have, I'll have a, what is it? Uh, a unified communications platform of my own, right? We like totally replace everything that Ring Central can do. Uh, so, yeah. The other one that was a, a weird customer for this was, um, you remember that Dr. Brian Fine that they kept talking about in, um, what's it called? In uh, Claris and Gage. It's like the poster child for uh, for the telemedicine project. Um, he actually, he went on my website about a month after that whole project and just bought this. He's the only one that's ever clicked buy now and actually sent money before talking to me. It's like, okay, I'm, I don't know why. I don't, you know, I never really got a chance to look at their solution to see if it was actually working, but um, I mean, I don't know if the, the thing that they built before he bought my thing was ever really fully in production or not, or if it was just, you know, advertising and saying, this is what we wanted to do. And, you know, we're just trying to not really ever show it anybody the actual finished product because the story is more important than the product is. So who knows what the marketing gurus at Claris will come up with next, you know? Uh, if that's all, if that's all um, thank you very much, Sully, for your, and brought PBX presentation and integrating with the Twilio app. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Twilio API. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me.